And I'll give the floor to Mr. Tor Wendesland. <coughs> Mr. President, members of the Council, the Secretary General and I have briefed this Council extensively in private over the last uh, days on details of the horrific and unprecedented events that have been unfolding, relaying our utter condemnation, shock and regret. I will not repeat my briefings here today, noting that I will report on the situation next week during my regular monthly briefing. My colleague Martin will brief you on the humanitarian situation. Today, I want to update you on where we are on my efforts over the last days to find a way to bring the end to hostilities and spare lives of civilians. I have to be very honest here and now and say that this is one of the most difficult moments facing the Israeli and Palestinian people in the last 75 days, 75 years. The massacre and despicable acts of violence and terror perpetrated by Hamas against Israelis on 7 October are seared into our collective memories. Whole families killed, women and children abducted uh, to the Strip and held up until this day. There is no justification or excuse of such an act of terror and I condemn them unequivocally. We are facing a devastating and clearly difficult challenge for the region and for the international community. It comes at a moment when the global institutions will need to respond to such, in such act and crisis, they are already overstretched. We are in a war and wars are filled with horrific scenes of violence and tragedy. Last night I watched in horror and in real time, as I was sure we all did, as reports uh, of mass casualties emerged from what should be a protected site, shielded from danger, a place of healing. Hundreds of Palestinians who were killed, patients, and those seeking shelter when al Akhli Hospital in Gaza City was struck by lethal fire. The circumstances of this catastrophe and responsibility remains still needs to be clarified. And we will need to be, uh, we will, and we will need a fact-based, fully investigation and broad investigation. But the result of all this is very clear, Mr. President. It is a terrible tragedy for those who were involved. I fear that we are at the brink of a deep and dangerous abyss that could change the trajectory of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, if not of the Middle East as a whole. After more than a century of conflict and over half a century of occupation, we, the international community, have failed. Collectively, to bring the parties to a just sustained political resolution. The long-standing issues run deep and extend well beyond the confines of Israel and the, and the occupied Palestinian territory. The events of the past 11 days have served to reignite grievances and reanimate alliances across the region. Based on my meetings and the uh, dynamics I observe on the ground, I would say the following. The risk of an expansion of this conflict is real, very, very real, and extremely dangerous. Mr. President, since the outbreak of the current hostilities, it has been my absolute priority to work to diminish the, uh, these existential threats. With the Secretary General, I have been in constant communication with a broader range of interlocutors, with the parties, with regional and international actors who have agencies and influence. I will continue to do so. Today, I speak to you from Doha, where the authorities have assured me of their continued commitment to the Palestinian people and their humanitarian needs, and the urgency to prevent any further loss of civilian lives. 
meetings and ongoing discussions with leaders in Egypt have focused not only on the critical uh, on the question of facilitating access to Rafah crossing on humanitarian assistance, but also our shared concern and efforts to rein in further regional hostilities. I will return to Cairo tomorrow to join the Secretary General to continue these political discussions. In this regard, we welcome President Al-Sisi's swift call for a summit of world leaders to continue these discussions. I also had similar discussions with leaders in Lebanon and Jordan, as well as on repeated phone calls with the P5 and other key regional and international partners who are seized of an activity engaged and addressing this conflict. We are all seeking a common understanding and approach at this critical time. I welcome the visits of world leaders such as German Chancellor Schultz, the UK Foreign Minister Cleverly, and today uh, the visit by President Biden. With the parties on the ground in Jerusalem, Tel Aviv and Ramallah, my message have remained steadfast that we must not let the dynamic of the current conflict take our eyes off what I will call the day after. The day after we need to start working on now, immediately. We know the way forward. These days, I can tell you, diplomacy is very hard. But here is what we need to do. We need the time and space to achieve two urgent objectives. Hamas' immediate, unconditional release of all hostages. Secondly, and fast unrestricted access of humanitarian aid for Palestinians in Gaza. The third thing must be a collective effort to end the hostilities and prevent any further expansion of the conflict to the region. Regarding West Bank and Lebanon, there should be no miscalculation, no provocation, and no step that closes the door for our current efforts. The step beyond must be down the path towards the political solution. Ultimately, the only way to bring the end to the bloodletting and prevent any recurrence of the pave and to pave a way forward, a long-term political solution in, is needed in line with UN resolutions, international law and previous agreements. As I've stated many times to this council, a patchwork of ad hoc and temporary fixes and perpetual management of conflict without addressing underlying issues is not sustainable. That has been proven over the last 11 days. What we are seeing on the ground now all too tragically proves that this is true. What we must do now is to work together as one to achieve these objectives. Thank you. I thank Mr. Winnersland for his briefing. I now give the floor to Mr. Martin Griffiths.